بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مرسلي وعلى آله وصحبه تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد فاجم لما أغلق وخاجم لما سبق ناشر حق بالحق والحادي إلى شراتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طيب الحمد لله this is the seventh uh, installment of the class station to the grassroots or stations for the grassroots where we are examining the text Manazil al-Sa'areen by Sheikh al-Islam Abdullah al-Ansari al-Hirawi طيب so now he's going deeper into the text and he's talking about the elements of Yaqitha in each of them uh, detailing the three-tiered or the three-level um, explanation in which he's giving us this information. And so we left off last week where he says, وَأَمَّا مُتَعْلِيَةُ الْجِنَايَةِ فَإِنَّهَا تُسِحُّ فِي ثَلَاثَةِ أَكْشَاءِ بِتَعْظِيمِ الْحَقِّ وَمَعْرِفَةُ النَّفِسِ وَتَصْدِيقُ الْوَعِيدِ he says that as for the reflection of the transgression, indeed it is sound in three things. The magnification of the truth and knowing the self and being sincere and the promise, which is the promise for rectification. Now, so... This is explained in a sense where he says that the, the second element of Yaqitha that he explains is Mataliya to Jinaya, which is the reflection of the transgression. But when we've done wrong, we've completed a sin against Allah, or we've transgressed against the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've gone against what Allah says. He said that the reflection of that transgression has three things. It's sound and three things. The first of which he says is the magnification of the truth. And what does this mean? The magnification of the truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that when we reflect on our wrong, our wrongdoings or our transgressions, three things are essential. The first is that we magnify the greatness of Allah, the Most High, and recognize His absolute authority in everything. And for us as African Americans, and our experience in America, in dealing with racism and dealing with white supremacy, is that the first step for us is to understand that we have to understand that Allah, the, the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. Because if we're on a path like the society is taking us on, it's a path to nowhere. It's a path where, that has no end. There's no objective. It's just entertainment after entertainment and destruction after destruction, vice after vice. And it doesn't end and it's addictive. It's addictive because it's laden with all of the things that satisfy our own lower desires. But when you want to venture out onto a path toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our objective, we want to get right with Allah. At the end of the day, everyone wants to be right with Allah because everyone wants to be to enter into, into paradise. Everyone wants to enter into the blessings and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the goal. The problem is that we're living in a toxic environment that is consistent and distracting us and deterring us away from that goal. So the first is that everyone as an individual first has to acknowledge the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-haq. He is the truth. He is the only truth. Allah is the only reality, which you can translate that as as well. Allah is the only reality. And we said last time in the last class is that the way that we perceive the world is that we don't see we don't see the creation of Allah. We don't see we don't see the people, the material things. What we marvel at is the creator. So we see Allah's hand in everything. It doesn't mean that we see Allah in everything. No. What it means is wahta to shuhud, is that we see that everything is the creation of Allah. And that we recognize and we magnify the creator of those things. And so when you walk like this, and you can see like this, as in the hadith says, that I become the eyes by which he sees. And Allah is the hadith Qudsi, where Allah says about the slave that consistent, is consistent in performing his nawafil prayers. Allah, be, he gets to a spiritual level, a spiritual maqam, where Allah becomes the eyes by which this person sees. Allah becomes the ears by which this person hears. Allah becomes the hands by which this person touches and strikes. Allah is the feet by which he walks. So if we think about this, what kind of eyesight is this? What kind of hearing is this? What kind of walking is this? How do we get to this level? Is the magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is when you see Allah's hand in, his, in all of his creation. And I gave an example, just as simple as a tree. Looking at a tree, we can marvel at the beauty of the tree. The roots, the branches, the fruit of the tree. But what we marvel at is the creator of that tree. The creator of the function of the tree. And the purpose that it serves and the way that Allah methodically planted trees and placed trees in the earth. The way that Allah placed everything in such a perfect state. And we marvel at that. Even in our lives, as African Americans, how Allah has strategically placed us on this journey to where we are, where we are right now. It could be from a perspective of one looking at it, from a sense of something negative, having gone through slavery, the, the lives that were lost in the Atlantic Ocean, the, the, the lives that were lost during the slave period, all of the oppression, all of the systematic oppression and discrimination, the lynching, the killing, the brutality, the dehumanizing system that we live under. At the same time, the individual, and the only way to get over this, because we're stuck in this vicious cycle, where these things keep coming up, and they go round and around, round and around, and our emotions are played with, and there's no end in sight. And what the Sheikh here in this text is doing for us is he's breaking that cycle. He's breaking that, that, he's breaking that cycle for us. So he's saying, let's stop here and look at, first, you magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recognize, Allah, recognize Allah's authority, that Allah is the reality. That whatever had happened has happened in the past is irrelevant right now. You and we as a collective whole 
or trying to move forward. Doesn't mean that we forget the past, but we have to stop the cycle that we've been taught to think in. So he's saying now, magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, reflection, reflect on what we've done wrong. Forget about other people and what was done to us. Let's look at ourselves and let's look at what we've done wrong, how we've oppressed ourselves. First, by magnifying the truth, magnifying the reality, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we magnify the importance of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the supreme importance of ta'a, of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we view our transgressions as something important, something grave and damaging on our path toward him. And we have a sense of great loss and great nadama and great regret. And this causes ourselves to become enlightened to the importance of absolute obedience and dedication to the commands and the prohibitions that are outlined in the Sharia. Because if this is not supreme in our lives, this is the main priority, it doesn't matter what we do afterwards, we're going to fall. We have to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obeying him and obeying his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam first the first priority in breaking the bond and breaking that connection that we have to oppression and the slave mentality above anything else forget everything else this is the priority And the only way that he's saying here is that we reflect on our, what we've done wrong, our past transgressions. And the sound, and these three things. And the first one is the magnification of Allah. So that we can understand the importance of being obedient to him. Secondly, he says knowing the self. Now get this. Knowing the self. After we recognize Allah, as the supreme authority and obeying him and following and imitating his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam then it's knowing the self knowing or recognizing the self indicates that once we understand what we just mentioned we become enlightened and inspired to connect to Allah and repent and seek forgiveness for what we've done in the past. Because at this point, at this point, at this moment, right now, it's about you and Allah and that relationship. Everything else will come into play later, but right now, at the first initial steps of the, on the path toward him, it's about you and him, Azza wa Jal. And Allah says that the only way to achieve his love is by following and imitating his messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So we understand that they come together, obeying Allah and obeying his messenger. Atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul. And knowing what we've done wrong, admitting what we've done wrong, and seeking tawbah, seeking repentance, is to for what we've done wrong. And moving forward. And being sincere in that, being sincere in the promise of our obedience to Allah. What this does is that it reinforces the rectification of our wrongdoings. And this thereby elevates our condition. Because we understand that in order for us to break out of this cycle of negativity, of self-destruction that we've been put in, 
and as that we have also contributed to the only one that can take us out of this is the law. We can do nothing by ourselves. Nothing. We are completely helpless and we completely depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nasta'in. This is absolute. And we have to recognize that. Far too many of us want to play the blame game. Okay? And point the fingers and, and, and so that we can sleep at night. But Allah wants us to recognize our own faults. Allah will deal with everyone else who's done wrong to us. But first, we have to deal with ourselves. And to be spiritually awakened, the one who becomes spiritually awakened, this is what he's concerned with. Myself, myself, nafsi, nafsi. What have I done? Because too often do we collectively lament and the sorrows and anguish of our own history. Our own history in America. Okay, we go back and we see all the movies and all of the television shows and, and you can hear it in our music. You can hear it in our storytelling. We can see it in our condition in our neighborhoods. We tend to overly blame our former slave masters and blame the system for our problems. And yes, they played a major role. We understand history. A major part of rectifying our condition, okay, and a huge, not just a major part, but an overwhelming aspect of rectifying our condition and seeking the path to Allah is to own up to our own responsibility to change ourselves. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's done whatever to you. It's your responsibility to get out of the condition that you're in as an individual. And it's our, our responsibility collectively as a whole to do for the people. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to solve our problems but us. No one. We have to quit crying about reparations and quit crying about this. And we need this from these people. We need that from that from those people. No, we need to do for ourselves. And then Allah, as a wajal, will raise our condition. He will raise us in rank. He will raise our state, both spiritually, physically, economically, intellectually. He's going to raise us to a different maqam, a much higher maqam than what we are right now. Because we, we have the proper perspective. It's about us and about worshiping Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so we played a, a, we played a, a major, a, a significant role in our own demise as a people. Okay? Not denying that most of it or much of it has been brought on us. But we have to recognize our own transgressions and make tawbah to Allah for that. Okay? There are things that in our culture that no one makes us do, we do. And now in this year, 2020, that we have no excuse for. To continue the mentality, continue the behavior that we do, there's no excuse. So I don't want to get this people to start thinking it's about other people. Okay, the path to Allah for any Muslim, doesn't matter what culture, what color, what racial background he comes from, or what experience he comes from, is that the only, and that's what Islam teaches, is that you, your journey toward Allah is about you and him. Allah, 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 Allah only. And then when you make tawbah and recognize your faults, and your transgressions, Allah will raise you up. And if Allah raises you up, no one can keep you down. Okay, so we, we, are, we have to recognize that it's our responsibility to take control of our own situation and to turn back to Allah and make the effort to change. We have to make the effort 
to change. So imagine if we become all of what we've gone through at this point, Allah become the eye that which we see. Allah become the ear by which we hear. He becomes the feet by which, by which we walk. What kind of behavior collectively are we going to have? How is our culture going to change if those things take place? So we have to reflect about this and understand have the spiritual maturity to understand what the Sheikh is saying here. Okay? This is so, so critical. These things are, are, are essential to understand. Okay? And that understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being sincere, that, and, and for us being sincere to Allah's promise, being sincere in what it is that we're asking Allah for. Being sincere and being soldiers for Allah. Being sincere and, and depending on Allah. Then we're going to find success. So take heed to this. And then he says, the Shaykh continues and he says, again, three more things. He's talking about that. He's talking about now, Ma'rifatu Ziyadati Munukusan Min Al Ayam. Knowing the increase and the decrease in, in subsequent days. In which we explained what it, what it meant earlier. He said that indeed it is established by three things. Listening to knowledge. Answering the sacred call. And keeping the company of the righteous. Now, keeping the company of the righteous people. He says that it is not possible to know. It's not impo it is impossible, or rather it is not impossible to know the increase and the decrease of one state without learning sacred knowledge. Again, it is not possible to know the increase and the decrease of your spiritual state without learning sacred knowledge. And this is because it rests upon distinguishing the required protection and soundness in order to progress and increase in closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in degree and status from that which is destructive and evil and therefore decreases and further distances one from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So none of this is possible without listening, listening to and engaging in learning sacred knowledge and paying attention to the admonition of the scholars. And this is something that we have established at the Fayda Institute. We've designed and we've established a curriculum uh, whereby people, the average person, the lay person, anyone can come and learn what is required for them to learn. So we leave no excuses on the table. Every individual, if you want to know your spiritual state and how it increases and decreases, And keep account of where you are on a spiritual level, you have to learn sacred knowledge. Sacred knowledge. The individual obligations. This is this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed things. Because the one who is ignorant 
It's as though he's in a dark room. And when you're in a dark room, you can't see. You can't distinguish anything from anything. You don't know what's to the right of you. You don't know what's to the left of you. You don't know what's above or you don't know what's below. So what knowledge does is brings you out of that darkness of ignorance and it brings you into the light of knowledge. And so for us, our sojourn in America, the way that the system is designed in America, the educational system, the judicial system, the economic system, the political system, the educational system, it's all designed to keep us in that dark room. The entertainment industry is designed to keep us in that dark room. It doesn't matter if it's what music, movies, television, the arts, all of these things have been designed to keep us in that dark room. And we've been so trained that we enjoy being in that dark room. Because when we're in that dark room, there's no responsibility. We're like children. And people provide for us, we take what they provide for us. And we're comfortable. Because we can make excuses at the end of the day, and our minds, it's okay. It makes everything seem all right. And the reality is that many people enjoy being out in that dark room. And if you give most of us an opportunity to come out of that dark room, as Carter G. Woodson said, we won't. We refuse to come out that dark room. And I mentioned uh, Carter G. Woodson as he said that the slave will always enter into the back door. He will always enter into the back door. The slave will never enter a house from the front door because in his mind, he's not worthy of going through the front door. And he said that if you were to close the back door or get rid of the back door and only have the front door open, he said the slave will go out and create another back door to enter from. This is the slave mentality. And this is where we are. As Harriet Tubman said, I freed, she said, I freed thousands of slaves, and I could have freed thousands more if they only knew that they were slaves. So that when we go and we get, we recognize what the dark room is doing to us and what it's done to us, and now we have the opportunity to transfer ourselves and leave that dark room of ignorance and come into a room where there's light and knowledge the knowledge of the self, knowledge of our Lord, knowledge of this messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can move and move forward. And we can have these, take the responsibility on ourselves to move forward and control our own destiny. We become awakened. And this is the fear that the larger societies have. And this is nothing new. Marcus Garvey said this. Malcolm X said this, Martin Luther King said this, W.E.B. said this, Booker T. has said this, Frederick Douglass has said this, Sir Jonah Truth has said this, Harriet Tubman said this. This is nothing new. But we don't listen. Because we're taught not to listen to things that's going to change our state. We're trained to reject those things. We're trained to reject becoming empowered by knowledge. Because they drown us out with the music, the movies, the television, the videos. They magnify ignorance, the thug life, the gangster life, drugs, drinking, promiscuity. They have most of us thinking we act like animals. We just 
act like this animal out here. It can't con no self-control whatsoever because we're in that dark room. And Muslims aren't immune from this. The black Muslim community is not immune from this. Okay, just many people become Muslim and they're still in that dark room. They still remain in that dark room. Change is difficult. Change is difficult. So the seeker must learn the limits and the boundaries of actions in relation to the sacred law, which every responsible, every mature, and every sane Muslim is obligated to know. If you are sane, you have a good intellect, you don't have a brain defect. If you are above the age of puberty, okay, and you become a Muslim, you have obligations to knowledge. You have an obligation to knowledge. You have an obligation to learn. And if you don't learn, not learning itself is a sin. So this is what is meant when he says, answering the sacred call. Well, ijaba to dua'il hurma. Well, ijaba to dua'il hurma. Answering the sacred call. Allah is calling you to knowledge. Allah is calling you to knowledge. And this is why we've established Faith Institute. Because we're calling you to knowledge. This is the result of that call. This is the result of that call. Are you going to answer the call? If the phone rings, you answer it. Allah is calling you to seek the knowledge. It's an obligation that you answer the call. So all of the above is not complete. All of what we said is not complete and cannot be sustained without the company of righteous people. Righteous people. By being in the company of righteous people, we learn the proper adjunct, the proper etiquette. We learn good manners. We learn good character. People, we have to have an example, examples to follow. It is much more than just learning the lines of books. Sacred knowledge is always taken from people, not from books. Understand, sacred knowledge is taken from people, not from books. This is also part of the wisdom of going to the masjid to pray in congregation, as Sheikh Muhammad Malud alludes to in the Kafa, so that we can be around righteous people and people of knowledge. This is what he said in, his, in the book, the Kafaf, that this is part of the wisdom of, of, of Salat and Jama'ah, that you, or we go to the masjid, we are around righteous people, people of Allah, people of knowledge. But how many people go to the masjid five times in a day? People, we have a lifestyle, people going to the masjid Friday to Friday, Jummah to Jummah. How is that going to solve anything? It's not. This is the call to change the lifestyle, change the attitude, the way that we move, the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we see, the way that we listen. So one must seek to find qualified teachers who are learning in the tradition and are readily available and willing to teach the text that must be learned. Okay? Understand this. And this is why Fader Institute is in existence. So we are calling you to Fader Institute. Come and learn what it is that you need to learn so that you can go from that dark room of ignorance into the room that is illuminated with knowledge. Now, and lastly, lastly, and this will end this chapter on Yaqafah, he says, 
Chala'a Adat. Establishing all the above will prevent a relapse into ignorance and wrong action. So he said that know that the self return, will return to wrong action. That just because you now be coming to the light of knowledge doesn't mean that you can go, you can't go back to that dark room. Okay? It's easy to fall back into a state of heedlessness. Okay, if you cannot maintain going forward. It's important. It's extremely important for those who have been awakened spiritually and now have undertaken this spiritual path to Allah Azawajal, to be disciplined and strict about elevating their state, elevating their spiritual state. Okay? Be hard on yourself. Make the change and do not allow yourself to fall back into old habits and negative ways. It's extremely easy because this is the way that the society is designed to. Okay? Be disciplined. Be vigilant about the commandments and the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Study. Enter into, uh, enroll in faith and institute. And learn your father ain't. Learn your individual obligations. The halal, the haram. What to believe in. What not to believe in. Okay, take heed to the negative elements in, the, in your life. Okay, as an individual, take heed to the negative elements in your life. Pay attention, whether it is certain people or a particular person, and stay away from them. Being hard, being hard on ourselves is the key. Okay, no one should be harder on yourself than you. And this is why as a people, we have to be critical of one another, constructively critical. Not destructively, but constructively criti critical. This is so because once we are lenient with ourselves, then the nafs will recline back into its old ways. And any progress will be blocked. So understand this. So what we've said, all the above, the above, uh, the aforementioned, okay, if you go back, to the beginning, much of this is difficult, okay, for a lot of us. Okay, our situations vary, but once we we often come, we often come from a very tight knit social group that makes it difficult to make the necessary changes in our lives that are needed for spiritual progress. Whether you come from a tight knit family. Okay, your social network, your social group, it makes it difficult to change. Okay, this is where our culture is, has been set up. Okay, so oftentimes those negative elements in our lives we hold dear to our hearts. And we know what I'm talking about. Our loved ones, our boys, our girls. Okay, everyone has people who are close to them that may be a little off. They, you know, they, they, they tend to bring us along, along their road of negativity, their path to destruction, and we ride with them because we have this ride or die mentality when it comes to our people. So we must understand, we must understand that we must change, we have to change our entire social circle, our entire environment, and cultural habits in order to travel this path. This path that the Sheikh is laying out for us. Sometimes this may mean that we relocate to another country, another city, another state, okay? Wherever, another side of the city. You may have to go from the west side to the east side, okay? But going back and remaining in our own stomping grounds in our own neighborhoods, it can prove to be harmful for, harmful for us. We must change our environment and create new, a new social circle that is filled with the people of Allah, people who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who have a routine, a daily routine, a daily lifestyle, daily habits, who have established a daily culture of worship and ubadiyah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this new routine, it will enable us to make 
to make that spiritual progress that we're looking for. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of all of our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and afia. If you have any questions, or any concerns, or any comments, please feel free to contact us at any point in time. This ends now the section on Yakhtha. Now we move in to the Baba Toba, inshallah. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi tasliman kathira. Subhana rabbika rabbi izzat al-amma yasifun wa salamun ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.